Hello, my name is Marijn Kolen. I work at the Huygens Institute in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And this is work with a number of my colleagues from the Huygens Institute, the Humanities Cluster, Netherlands eScience Center and Utrecht University. This work is part of a long-term plan to validate reading topologies derived from in-depth reader responses. And we do that by investigating whether we can find evidence of these same types of reading in online book reviews. The corollary of that is if we can validate these reading typologies, it means that we can also study these reading types, not just in hundreds of in-depth reader responses, but also in millions of book reviews. And what we present here today are the first steps for that. This is part of a larger project, Impact and Fiction, with the tagline that we are interested in measuring the impact of fiction on readers. And we look at book reviews because of this example that I show here, with a sentence, I really enjoyed this book, as it made me remember what it was like to be a young child and all the changes in our thought processes, etc., etc. So people describe their reading experiences in book reviews, and these might therefore be good sources to find different types of, of reading. Overview of our talk. I'll first touch on theoretical background, on the various reading typologies, and then discuss the impact that platforms might have on reviewing. Then I'll discuss explain a little bit about the methods we use to analyze this and discuss the results in terms of discourse markers that are of interest, namely DX is a modality, and also touch on the differences that we find in different platforms and, and reviews of different length. At the end I'll draw some conclusions. Reading typologies from in-depth responses largely come in two different strands, interpretive and experiencing. Interpretive has several subtypes, story-driven, where the reader is mostly attuned to story development and plotline, ironic allegoresis, where there's more interpretation, poetry interpretation, um, narrative analyses that are thematic and cultural, and also external enactment, where readers do reflect on the feelings of authors and characters. But on all three of these types, there's a clear distinction between the reader and the book and the story and characters. The experiencing type includes self-implication, where the reader is actively engaged in the feeling expressions and a sense of self is involved, and self-modifying, where the reader merges with story characters and experiences what the characters experience as if it happened to themselves. In in-depth responses, they found that several discourse markers are differentiating in these types, and two key ones are deixis, perceptual deixis and modality, and that's the ones we'll be touching on in this talk. Those discourse markers are the following. In interpretive reading, we find that the responses focus on argumentation, and if they talk about experience, it's mostly on definitions and on analysis. They have low variation uh, of usage in, in collocates. Uh, if they use as though, as if, uh, it's mostly adversative or additive. And if they use first-person pronouns, uh, they have a higher frequency of using me, so the oblique or the object uh, related version of first person pronouns. For experiencing reading, the focus is much more on imagination and creating scenarios in which they compare the text world and that of their own and others. There's a higher sense of agency, making connections between the textual experience and self experience. There's a higher usage of the word experience itself. There's also a higher variation in, in usage of collocates, uh, as though as if is also used much more in constructing comparisons, and they use much more I and me, uh, I and my instead of me, and also more use of the second person pronouns. In addition, they also give longer responses. The impact on platforms on reviewing have been studied as well. So first of all, there's this notion that platforms, different platforms have different purposes and different focus. For instance, some platforms focus on buying and selling books like Ball and Amazon, Others are focused on cataloging and giving ratings like uh, Goodreads and Hebon in the Netherlands. Others next to reviewing are focused more on discussion. For instance, Lasers Tippen Lasers, Bookmaker, what lees jij nu? And earlier work has shown that, for instance, in book selling platforms, reviews discuss more aspects of the buying and ordering process, customer service, different editions of books. And platforms also have different audiences. So some are much more international, like Goodreads, some are mostly regional, uh, specific language or culture. Other platforms might be focused on particular genres, like Hebon, on, they used to be focused on thrillers and crime novels, which is now broadened to all fiction, but in the reviews you still see that a, a large chunk is thrillers and crime. 
Also, Ball sells much more than just books, so the features of the platform are also geared not towards books, but to a much wider set of items. And then finally, reviewers also have different motivations based on the platforms they use, which might be purely book discussion, but it could also be that they try to promote a certain self-image or um, establish a certain identity, or they might even be promoting certain books. So the main question we have is, can online book reviews validate empirical in-depth fiction reading topologies? And we have three more concrete sub-questions. Can we identify reading types from textual characteristics in online book reviews? Are those textual characteristics different across reviewing platforms? And are they related to the characteristics of those platforms? The data that we use consists of 634,000 online Dutch book reviews, which were written by over 200,000 reviewers on seven different platforms. They were written over a period of 23 years, and we obtained them by crawling those platforms in different phases over a period of almost 10 years. The breakdown of these reviews per platform, for certain platforms we have hundreds of thousands of reviews, like Paul and Hebon. Recall that Paul is the book selling platform, but for others we only have a few thousand reviews. The total collection is almost 100 million words, and you also see that some platforms have, tend to have relatively short reviews, others have longer reviews. I'll say more about that, that later. To analyze this, we need to do some processing of the reviews, and since we want to focus on DXs and modality, and concretely for DXs, we want to study the use of personal pronouns, and for modality, the use of modal verbs and the semantic types of verbs that are used, we need to do some pre-processing, and for that, we use syntactic parsing using TrendKit, so all reviews are parsed. This gives us per word part of speech information, the lemma, and also the syntactic function of that word in a sentence. Next to that, we use some additional lexical resources. There's Luke by Pennebaker. We use a Dutch dictionary for that with different word categories for sentiment, etc. And also the Dutch lexical reference database, which contains information about the semantic type of verbs. And since we want to do a quantitative comparison, we need to do some, have some kind of model for how these reviews came about and how we study this, these quantities. And we study the use of pronouns and modal verbs as the rate by which the reviewers choose words from those categories uh, to write the, the review. So the, the writing of the review is a sort of Poisson process whereby each time they write a word, they choose a word from a particular category. And we study the rate at which reviewers choose words from a particular category. So for instance, if a user uses uh, first person pronouns 5% of the time, then every word there's 5% chance that they choose the first person pronoun results. First we look at different platforms and the length of reviews. On the x-axis you see a logarithmic scale um, starting from one word reviews on the left all the way to reviews up to 10,000 words. And there are two important observations. First is that all platforms show a wide range of lengths of reviews. So all platforms have reviews of just a few words and reviews of hundreds of words and reviews of a few thousand words. So if the length of responses are signals for there being different reading types, all platforms show these, these differences. But also there are differences between the platforms. So the bold reviews uh, indicated in the sort of yellowish orange line peak around 50 words. So the majority of reviews are below 100 words, whereas the purple line for Hebon reviews peaks at around 500 words. So most reviews are several hundred words at least. So there is a big difference in, in length of reviews across platforms. This could mean that different reading types are found more on one platform than on another. Next, we look at the relation between the length of a review and the axis, so the use of personal pronouns. And here again, you see on the x-axis the length of reviews in a logarithmic scale. All the way on the left, you see the very short reviews with up to one or two words. And on the right, reviews with thousands of words. And on the y-axis, the fraction of words in a review that are personal pronouns. The lightest line is first-person pronouns. And short, very short reviews have almost no pronouns. There's almost no way to use a personal pronoun in a very short review. 
and then the rate goes up to around three, three and a half percent for reviews that are between 20 and 54 words, and then goes down and stabilizes at around 2 percent. A similar pattern is for second person pronouns with a lower rate that stabilizes around 1 percent. So first person pronouns are more common in reviews than second person pronouns. Third person pronouns keep going up as reviews get longer uh, to about 5 percent. This suggests that a larger chunk of long reviews is taken up by third person perspectives than first and second person perspectives. An intriguing question is who is the second person referring to in reviews? If the third person is likely to be referring to the author, or story, or characters, and the first person is likely to be referring to the reader, then who is the second person? I'll come back to that later on. If we do a breakdown of first person pronoun usage across platforms, we see that there are significant differences. The line in green at the top is for the Dizzy platform, and their readers use almost twice as many first-person pronouns than reviewers at the Laser Stipple Lasers platform. Neither of these platforms focuses on book selling, neither of these platforms focuses on cataloging, so it's not immediately clear why there are these differences. It might be a difference in types of reading. We see a very similar thing for second person pronouns, with again large differences between platforms. And now we see that reviews on Ball have a lo much larger fraction of second person pronouns than, for instance, the reviews on Bookmaker. Again, what this means is not immediately clear. It could be that on Ball, reviewers have a tendency to address the potential buyers of the same item. But it could also be that these platforms have different reading types. And then third person pronouns, and here we see smaller differences between platforms. We see that for all platforms the rate goes up as reviews get longer, um, but the differences between platforms are just not as distinguished. So in sum, there are significant differences between platforms, but they're mostly pronounced with the second and first person pronouns. So the this could be a possible signal that there are different distributions of reading types on different platforms. Third aspect is modality. Ideally, we would use Halliday's Grammar of Experience, but there are no lexical resources for Dutch to use this. So instead, we focus on verbs, modal and content verbs, and in particular, we focus on the keyness of verbs. So this is a notion from corpus linguistics. We are looking for verbs that are significantly more likely to appear in one set of reviews versus another, or that are significantly more likely to be used in combination with first-person pronouns and other pronouns. And we determine this using the log likelihood ratio and percentage difference to filter verbs that are key to a particular set of reviews or a set of pronouns or, s or a particular platform. For modal verbs, it is known from in-depth reading responses that it's associated with experiencing reading and there are six Dutch modal verbs that we include and for content verbs we look at for instance whether verbs are related to vivid imagination as we know that that is also associated with experiencing reading. If we look at the relation between modal verbs and the length of a review we see that for most modal verbs there's a fairly stable rate at which these are used from reviews that are 20 words or longer. If we look at the key verbs per platform, so the top 20 most distinguishing verbs per platform, focusing on the three largest platforms, we see that for Bowl, a lot of the verbs are related to the buying process, to recommending a book, and there are also some words that signal non-fiction topics. It appears that some of the reviews are for non-fiction books, which really stand out in this case. On Goodreads, a lot of the verbs are related to the actual reading of a book, the experience of reading the book, and also on evaluating the book. So words like enjoying, being frustrated, getting tired or, or sticking to it, or being entertained, are much more common. On Hebon, we see a few strange things. The first four are actually English words used in Dutch reviews, and the parser invents Dutch lemmas for English words. Can, be, have, and get. Several of the other verbs are very much action verbs that are associated with plot elements, things that happen in the book. 
So here you see that the nature of platforms is reflected in the verbs that are used in these reviews. Finally, we look at the combination of DXs and modality. The question is, are the use of pronouns and the use of verbs related to each other? From in-depth responses, we know that experiencing reading leads to responses where people use both more second-person pronouns, they use more modal verbs, and verbs related to vivid imagination. So if there are experiencing reading reviews, then we would expect there to be a connection between these types of discourse markers. So we look at verbs that are associated with a particular pronoun person. We look at the most common verbs. There are 460 that occur at least a thousand times. And only 12 of these are not key to one of the three person groups. So this means that the vast majority of verbs have a dominant pronoun person that they're tied to, that they usually occur with. And for modal verbs, that is very clearly the second person. All modal verbs are significantly more likely to be used in second person than with any of the other two persons. And on the y-axis of this plot, you see the percentage difference. And for four out of the six modal verbs, there's at least a 100% difference, meaning this verb is at least 100% more likely to occur in the second person pronoun than in first or third person. Next, we look at the combination of verbs and personal pronoun type. And we see again in the top 20 most distinguishing verbs, clear differences. For the first person, a lot of the terms are related to evaluation of the book, recommendation, and also transaction. When reviewers use second person pronouns, they use them in combination with verbs that are much more related to vivid imagination, and empathy, uh, absorption, using the senses. So that's imagining yourself in a story or picturing yourself in a story, letting go, empathizing, being drawn in, being dragged along, tasting and smelling, being submerged, etc. So this fully aligns with findings from in-depth reader response where experiencing reading ties second person pronouns to vivid imagination. Finally, third person pronouns, we see many more verbs related to action. Verbs indicating how things go with particular character or with the story, and also verbs related to what happens in the book kidnap, settle, flee, marry, murder, die. So this suggests that a third person is indeed used to describe characters and plot in a book. So to come back to our research questions, we had our first sub-question, which is, can we identify reading types from textual characteristics in online book reviews? We are not there yet, but the first steps with looking at these discourse markers in combination, provide hints that there really are different reading types present in these reviews. How do textual characteristics differ across reviewing platforms? We've seen that there are clear differences in length, in the usage of pronouns, in the usage of modal and content verbs, and we know of these markers that they are associated with different reading types. The third question is how are they related to the different characteristics of the platforms? And here we see that the nature of platforms is reflected in word usage. On book selling platforms, we see more verbs related to this buying and selling process. But for some of the other characteristics, it's less clear what their impact is on word usage. This needs further investigation. Finally, our main question is, can online book reviews validate empirical in-depth fiction reading typologies? And here the answer is, of course, we don't know yet. We haven't all done all the work, but these first analyses are promising. They give us enough reason to continue exploring this validation step. And with that, I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions.